Okay, here are the first 11 problems worked out or explained. Um, number one wants to know what the formula is for the surface area of the cylinder that they're showing. Now, the surface area, if you would unwind, and this would be easier for me to show you in class, but if you take a cylinder, imagine just sort of cutting it, if you will, you know, kind of slicing it down somewhere down here then when you would unwind this circular part, it would actually turn into a rectangle. That rectangle is going to be h units high, but as far as how wide it's going to be, well, think about it. You just unraveled this, so that's going to be 2 pi r. Well, you know that the formula for the area of a rectangle is base times height, so we have 2 pi r h, and that's called the lateral surface area. And then you also have the area of the top and the area of the bottom. Each of those are pi r squared, so we have 2 pi r squared plus the lateral surface area. Okay, number two, uh, if this function um, is f, then where is f of x greater than 0? Well, f of x just means y. So where your y values greater than 0, that's up here. So anywhere that x is between negative 2 and 1. And then the last one, uh, money in the bank quadruples every 8 years. If $100 is deposited today, what will its value be after 20 year, 24 years? Now, because 24 is a multiple of 8, we don't need to actually come up with an equation. Just make a little list. So this is year 0. This is when you're initially putting in the money. After 8 years, then after 16, then after 24, how much money are you going to have? You're quadrupling every time. So quadruple once, and then again, and then again. So that's your answer. Okay, the y-coordinate of the point of intersection of these two graphs. Uh, let me write these both down. And uh, Okay, and I'll put the other one under it. And I'm going to use elimination. Let me get a new color. Let's say that I want to subtract the top one from the bottom one. So I kind of point to things. We're going to go x minus x. Then we're going to go y minus negative 2y. Then we'll go negative 9 minus negative 18. So the x's are gone. That gives us a 3y, and that gives us a positive 9, so y equals 3. Now, we could plug that back into this equation or the other one to get x, but all they want to know is the y-coordinate, so y is 3. Okay, number 15. Um, they're talking about an odd function. An odd function is one that's symmetric with respect to the origin. Okay, and you know that because any time you change the sign of the x value, you're also changing the sign of the y value. So any point up here has an equivalent opposite sign x and opposite sign y down here. This has an opposite point, if you will, over here. So your answer is e. This, by the way, is an even function. This is an even function. This is neither even nor odd. This is neither even nor odd. Kind of junk that up a little bit. So this is your answer. Okay, you need to be able to do something like this without a calculator. So let's use these or change these rational exponents into roots. The 1 is your inside power and the 2 is your outside index. So 25 to the 1 half is the same as 25 to the first square rooted. Anytime you have a negative exponent, that means move it. So that 27 to the 1 third was at the top. Now we want 27 to the 1 third at the bottom. 
So that means the square root of 25 and the cube root of 27. And there's your answer. Okay, which best represents this? Without a calculator, you should know that this is a parabola that opens up, which there's only one. Um, just to point out, if you wanted to know exactly where this point was, that's called the vertex, you would have to complete the square here so that it would be an x minus h quantity squared plus k form. And your vertex would be at hk. But again, this is the only graph that's possible here. Okay, with this equation, um, to solve equations, you know you always do the opposite of what you see. Well, right now this x is locked up in this log function. So how do you undo logs? You exponentiate using the base that's here. So I'm going to exponentiate both sides using a 4. So that means 4 to the log base 4 goes away. And I'm just left with x plus 9. On the other side, I have 4 to the third, which is 64. So x plus 9 equals 64. Subtract 9 from both sides, and you get 55. OK, oh, this last one, maybe I can make this a little bit bigger. Uh, which best describes the graph of y equals 5 to the x? Any graph in this form, 5 to the x, that's called exponential. Exponential graphs look like this. By the way, this would be something like 5 to the negative x. And this might be a log function. This is uh, a parabola, and this is maybe some type of reciprocal function not 1 over x, but something like that. Okay, uh, number 10, if a fraction equals 0, 0 over a number is 0, this is just a review, a number over 0 is undefined. So, you just care about the top equaling 0, which means either 2x plus 1 equals 0, or x minus 5 equals 0. So add 5 to both sides, or subtract 1 from both sides, divide by 2. So x equals 5, or x equals negative 1 half. OK, and number 11, since 3 to the 7th is approximately equal to 2,000, of the following, which best approximates 3 to the 14th? Well, 3 to the 14th is just 3 to the 7th squared, right? Because when you have a power to a power, you multiply the powers. So that means that if 3 to the 7th is approximately equal to 2,000, then that must mean that I'm going to take 2, th whoops, 2,000, which is this, it's approximately 2,000, and I'm going to square it. To square this in your head, you square the 2, and to square anything with zeros, so that's three zeros for the one, three zeros for the other. Okay, so it's D.